works. Mm. It, it's funny seeing what resonates and what doesn't. Oh, it is, isn't it? That just made me think. I, when, I, when I was pretty new to the social media game, I was pretty fresh out of the army and I didn't have any uh, profiles or anything because it just wasn't a thing. When, yeah. when, and, and I'm a bit of a bloody Luddite. I'm slow to, to embrace technology, to be honest. And I'd written an article that I'd called, I'd titled, Why I'd Rather Be Shot by uh, an AK-47 Than an M4. That was the title of this article. And it was just designed as a... Uh, a really precursory introduction to terminal ballistics and just looking at the different wounding profiles between different velocity uh, rifles. Mm. And and use, it used a couple of case studies that were not comparing apples and apples directly. So there was an AK wound that was through and through and a, an M4 wound that had actually hit bone. And so, I mean, and, and I, I spoke about that in in the actual article and and I didn't expect this to have much reach at all I, can't, I think I might have written it for TACMED and then it uh, which at the time was pretty small but we were just putting a bit of uh, a bit of material forward from our lessons learnt cumulatively uh, in tactical medicine and this thing got picked up by uh, Softrep so one of the US mm. uh, sites and and then business insider picked this thing up as well and ran oh. it as a story and so it ended up getting near on a million views from business insider and it sort of took on this life of its own and and really engaged the <laughs> the, the us uh you know gun fraternity which is a pretty passionate group you know and oh gee it's there, there was some a lot of positivity but gee there was a lot of hate as oh, well really? and, and then there was these someone would comment and then four other people had ripped them apart and they sort of it it had it, it wasn't all directed at me by any stretch. It was people ripping each other apart yeah. in the comments. and But it just spiralled into this thing. And it was, like I said, I was pretty new to the game. And I remember I'd, I'd posted it and then I'd hopped on a flight and I'd gone over to Melbourne. And, and when I got off the flight at Melbourne, uh, I had I had half a dozen messages on my phone and I checked them. And, and one of them was from Jeremy Holder, the the founder and the CEO of TACMED. And, and he's like, man, you got to check out what's going on <laughs> online. And, and, uh, <laughs> I've done. It was just my first insight into this, this, this whole that whole space, the social media space, and and mm. I, I guess it was uh, it was a real insight into the the power and the reach you can have on the internet. It wasn't it wasn't all good. Like at that time, I, you know, there was a lot there was a lot of hate getting downloaded onto this, and a lot of people picking apart my interpretation of things, which was never the intent. You know, it wasn't meant to be a a, a, a physics lesson or a definitive you know, explanation of terminal ballistics. It was just a broad brush. Here's what happens. And, and, and anyway, but, um, yeah, it was, it, it, it opened my mind to this idea that, that here's this incredible tool, uh, yeah. being the internet and, and blogging and social media posts and podcasting, you know, this sort of stuff used correctly with the, the right agenda. Uh, it's, it's a pretty powerful thing. And, and yeah, it's, it's a interesting day and age that we, we live in. It's certainly very, uh, the, the, day and age that, that my kids are the, the world my kids are growing up in is a very different one to the one that i grew up in and i think recognizing that is is important well i guess I, at least you know and i'm probably a lot closer than you but i guess you're an adapter of technology when your kids are immersed in it so like you've, yeah you've taken on technology but you know what it's like to write yeah and you know it's like you know to you know do whatever but I guess kids, your your kids' age, young young kids, mm. they they they're not adapting to it. They're born yeah. into it. Yeah. Um. And it'd be interesting. I watched. There's a Netflix documentary. I can't remember what it's called, but it's on social media currently. Yeah. And the danger of it, I yeah. guess. And they're talking about from a psychology point of view how weird it is for us to have that reach because you can't imagine a million people. Mm. You know, we can say it, but you can't really think of it. Um. And they're sort of talking about humans are good at keeping a friendship group or you know friends and then friends of friends about 200 people mm. we can actually keep track of and you know know their names and faces and and sort of go from there mm. where the average account might have six or eight hundred people and yeah. then you have accounts of 20 40 000, a million and up yeah um and i'm saying it's such a weird environment for us to be in yeah uh, for humans where it doesn't you know, we can have the negativity feel like someone telling you to get stuffed, but yeah. not the positivity. Because yeah. I know if one, if, if 100 people tell me, oh, you're fantastic, I, it doesn't really feel like someone walking up to them in the street and saying it. No. But if one person tells me I'm a dickhead, 
Yeah. It feels the exact same yeah. as someone walking in the street. It's such a weird dynamic. Yeah. Um, but also, I know um, Jordan Peterson again, he talks about it's weird to be anyone is only ever two steps from a million people. Mm. Say you have a thousand followers, which is very common. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. And then one of your friends has a, or a lot have a thousand followers. Yeah. You're two steps from reaching a million people. Yeah. It's not that far. Yeah. Um, and, and him saying, don't ever think your word, especially on socials, isn't um, going to carry massively. Yeah. Um, not very often. And I, I say this privilege as well. Um, I've spoken before about the privilege of being able to speak to, I think I'm 21 ish thousand people. Mm-hmm. The privilege to speak to that many people a day is, it's never happened before. Yeah. No one's ever had this, um, I guess, ability in human existence of 200,000 years to be actually be able to do it. Yeah, so, yeah. you know, if a US president 30 years ago held a conference every single day, eventually 20,000 people wouldn't fucking tune in. They'd just not give a shit after mm. a while. And it's a true privilege to use correctly, of course. Yeah, yeah. But it can also be used incorrectly. Um, and it yeah. can be a major stressor on yourself. Like I've taken time off socials recently yeah, because it just became a lot because I, I don't, I do actually legitimately give a shit about people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it became like a, oh, fuck. And I felt responsible yeah. for, I have a lot of younger guys getting into the army, going through shit mm. and taking on some responsibility of, you know, outside that normal group of a couple of hundred that you sort of, you know, get in your tribe, I guess, your close, and then that expanding massively mm. and just being, being fucking overwhelming. Yeah. It's a, yeah. yeah, it's and we've spoken about this before that that, and, and I know you see it like I do as an obligation. If someone if someone sends me a message and takes time out of their day and feels that that they want to reach out to me and that my opinion is if they value my opinion, I want to answer that mm. you know, and I don't want to just answer it with an emoji. I want to try and you know give them something meaningful back if they've uh, sort of reached out like that. But but. As you say, if you're posting all the time and you're getting all that engagement, there's it, it becomes this this stress, and that's not what yeah. it's meant to be. But but um, and like you, I I wax and wane with my social media engagement, and with this book project, I've I've wound right down to try and focus my energies on that, and and not uh, not get to not not i mean distracted is probably not the right term but just just balancing my investment in in those relationships online and and sort of uh, with with getting this thing done and and uh, but yeah it's uh, i watched that same doco i can't remember what it's called but that netflix uh, social media doco and there was some we we watched it with our kids and just it, it was a good opportunity just to talk to them about this world that like you said they've been born into and for me the the internet didn't really become a thing until i was about 20 years old and and uh and then there was the all those sort of early years of dial-up internet and all that sort of stuff and so i mean i it it it, i was a young adult before it really became a a big thing and you i try and tell my kids that there was a world world before the internet and they just look at you blankly like how how can this be but this this there's some fascinating stuff that 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 doco draws out and there's a good book I, I, um, Gillespie is the author I can't recall the first name but called Teen Brain that looks at th- that this as well and the effects of the the online particularly the online world on teenagers developing brains and their their reward processing systems the dopamine and serotonin and, and anxiety and depression and this whole new world of online bullying and, and you know all that sort of cyber bullying and those concerning things and looking at suicide rates since the the internet and all this uh which has has really concerningly gone exponentially through the roof uh, you know yeah. uh, it's 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 a real worry but trying to raise kids in that age and get them to realize and and my eldest is at the point where you know it's some of his mates follow me on social media which oh, is a great yeah, it's a great yeah. um it's a great thing to be aware of what i'm posting when yeah. you you know when you your kids mates are buddy following you on instagram or whatever that that was a good eye opener when one of his mates said to me hey look you know i I liked what you posted the other day i thought oh shit what else have i posted i don't know that i want that uh but um yeah the the that idea that that somehow having a couple of thousand followers is a a metric for success is one that that you you know I, i really try and instill in my kids that it's not it's a it's a fantastic thing and yeah it's great but it it's not it's not like 
you know, there's, it's not like we've, we've got tens of thousands of good friends that you could lean on in times of hardship. Mm. And this, this is the point we try and reach in the, the, the book talking about the online, that online presence and interaction is one thing, but, but it, it can't be a, a substitute for meaningful human relationships. You know, you can, you can bolster meaningful human relationships online, sure, but, but you know, it's, it's, it's not a proxy for that, you know, meeting someone in the street, shaking hands or having a beer or you know sitting down with the chat like we are you know it's, yeah yeah it's it's a weird thing too because i almost feel like the more followers i've got it's almost like the less meaningful relationships i've got like i know yeah four or five years ago at a different time i was a young 19 20 year old digger too mm, mm. but i seem to have so many friends now i've really gone down to few really close friends you know yeah. as people move on and right? of course but of course i have these massive following and people are yeah. saying oh you're doing shield well not really <laughs> like mm. most of the time i'm hanging around the house in the gym yeah. by myself yeah, um, yeah, yeah you know it's not a bad thing but it's not yeah. and it's the only where the only generation to the only people alive to have this i guess number metric mm. of popularity yeah you know, it's any anyone ever has had popular kids at school or in that whatever forever mm. But now there's a number to it, yeah. and that's fucking dangerous. Like I, yeah. like, you know, I was in school and social media was sort of getting traction, I guess. Yeah. But especially now with a number, and you, you would have people at school with, I am better than you because yeah. I've got this, and it's like, yeah. well, no. And I think this is one of the reasons I get a bit of that stress from it too about replying to everyone and making sure mm. I put the effort because I'm like, who the fuck am I to think I'm better than you because I've got. A following. Oh, like that's sure. just ridiculous. Yeah. Like, yeah, no, you're exactly right. And and there was a point that resonated with with uh, me when I was watching that that social media doc on Netflix, and and I, I think it was a Facebook guy who was part of the the team that developed the like for Facebook, and and he said something along the lines of we we only ever saw it as this ability to to share happiness and to sort of share joy, and they they he, he said that he'd never foreseen that it could possibly uh, end up with people being depressed and being anxious and heaven forbid committing suicide because they weren't liked, you know? And, yeah. and, and you, you mentioned something before about that fixating on that one negative <laughs> comment. Yeah. And, and there's a, a, a great, uh, well, there's a whole bunch of biases that we're all prone to as humans and a lot of the time we don't know it, but when they get drawn into your, your conscious attention, you become far more aware of them happening. But there's one called negativity bias where we do tend to fixate on the one negative in a, in a you know, you, you might have you might have done an exam and you've done really well and you've, you've walked out of it, but you, you've realised as you walk out you've got that one question wrong and then you, you're kicking yourself about that. You know, it's, it's human nature to do that and and uh certainly i've i've found myself in years gone by guilty of that with you, you'd put a post up and and maybe you know a, a whole bunch of people would comment and say yeah that's great or love this or well done or thumbs up and then one yeah. dude hops up and just <laughs> says you know you're a dickhead or oh, yeah, yeah well done idiot you know that'll never work or something like this and you're like god damn you you one yeah. person and literally you know, it's, yeah it's hard it's hard not to uh, not to take that to heart isn't it but um no i think i've learned to have a good laugh about them yeah, oh, it's just, just one of those things of <laughs> yeah, socials. Of course there's always going to be yeah, someone. There's going to be some armchair expert. That, Holy shit. Oh, yeah. 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 I remember actually talking about that, uh, that AK versus the M4 article, and there was some champ who hopped on and, and really uh, well there was a cu there was a couple of really funny ones actually because I'd, I'd spoken about the kinetic energy equation which mm. is at the that's that's kind of underpins terminal ballistics it's you know ke equals half mv squared and it talks about mass velocity kinetic energy how much energy you're dissipating into the targets and it's 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 the the physics behind why a high velocity projectile wounds someone and how much damage it does and and I had the all the scientific community jump on my my interpretation of this and and i must have got something slightly wrong yeah. i still to this day don't know how i balls that up because i'm not smart enough to know the the intimate details of that physics but i i slightly misinterpreted part of the kinetic energy equation which offended the the, the physics community and they were quite uh, happy to let me know that yeah. and then then i had the gun nuts that were really offended by my generalization of an ak wound and an m4 wound and they started to talk about oh what if it was this projectile and what if you 
use this amount of grains yeah. of bloody whatever and all this sort of what about this ammo and what about this and no if it was suppressed it'd do this and you just like and then i had uh, one champ who said just flat out that's not an ak wound <laughs> and i'm kind of <laughs> like i was there man like, <laughs> like, <laughs> I, can, I can actually tell you beyond question that this is an ak but he's like no nah. No, he wasn't having nah. it. He's <laughs> like, you don't know what you're talking about. That is not an echo. When he's just like, all right, man, you win. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> Oh, fuck. So on that, why, why is it that you would prefer to be shot by an AK than an AK? Uh, the, the, I mean, the premise of that not is not to it, trigger everyone on my podcast. Yeah, yeah, here we go. Let's <laughs> let's let's reinvigorate this one. But the uh, in a nutshell, so uh, AK forty seven is they're both high velocity, uh, so they're both over two thousand foot per second muscle velocity muscle uh, muzzle velocity. The AK forty seven is about twenty three hundred foot per second, whereas the the uh, M four is about thirty two hundred foot per second. So it's about a thousand foot per second faster, and it's a the the M four round or the five five six. You know the the five five six by forty five the Steyr slash M four uh, anything that shoots that particular round. It's a much smaller much faster projectile and so it 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 causes a lot more uh, so it's when you look at that kinetic energy equation which i you know <laughs> the scientific community was quite quite yeah. keen to tell me I'm, I'm not getting entirely right but what i do know is that you, you've got mv squared and so the velocity component of it is squared and so it's the velocity of the round that really influences the kinetic energy as opposed to the mass yeah. and so when you've got a, a um, 556 so an m4 projectile it's it's smaller but traveling significantly faster lower mass but but much higher velocity and so it imparts a, a significant more kinetic energy it's also got a different wounding profile as a generalization so an m4 round or a 556 five, will tend to go in a fairly small distance before it will yaw so it'll turn sidewards and if it's going fast enough when the, the projectile turns sidewards it will actually shear open so the the, the little it, there's a soft spot a weak spot where the the projectile is crimped into the casing to yeah. to seal it in the bullet and and that tends to fracture open and then it, it uh, the bullet tends to disintegrate and i mean these are all generalizations but it has a far higher tendency to uh to fragment uh, the the ak round has a tendency to just plow straight through so the actual projectile stays intact it i've i don't think i've ever seen one fragment in my experience which you know isn't isn't it isn't super extensive but i'm sure it does happen I, I didn't see it but it was far more likely just to push straight through someone and it, it it tends to travel through a lot more tissue before the bullet starts to tumble and um and as i said i never saw one fragment it generally punches in and out um, so the long and the short of it is with the, the m4 round like bang bang for bang bang for your buck <laughs> am i trying to say here shot shot at the same range with the same weapon system so say you, you cop around from 150 meters away with an ak uh you know it's much more likely to plow through whereas the m4 is much more likely to to your disintegrate and cause uh, impart a whole bunch more kinetic energy and do a whole bunch more damage and and so that was the the premise of that article and it was based on things like ballistic gelatin uh trials and and typical wounding profiles of those weapon systems and and then I did actually put in there, however, it, it, it doesn't always happen like this. You can get hit with an AK, it can be disastrous, an M4 can just go straight through. But but this, it was just, as I said, it was meant to be a, a broad brush. Here's what kinetic energy looks like. Here's why a high-velocity gunshot wound causes so much damage. Here's the typical wounding pattern of AK. Here's the one for M4. Therefore, I'd rather be shot by an AK. That was that was it, yeah. you know? Yeah. And, then, <laughs> and then everything uh, kind of went from there with people ripping it apart. Just bulk-triggered yeah. yanks in the comments. Yeah, no, nah, did but but uh yeah no it was it, it was good i mean it was overwhelmingly a positive response but um yeah there was a and then there was this this other cohort that that had actually and i I, I'd pro, I hadn't really thought of this and i hope it didn't come off as insensitive but there was a whole bunch of people who had actually been shot by ak's yeah. who, who hopped on and said well hey i've you know i've actually been shot by an ak and it wasn't that much fun and so you know i'm like oh geez i hadn't really thought of that when i wrote this and it kind of stirred up a, a, a bunch of responses that i hadn't anticipated yeah jesus and i guess